Welcome to Conversations on the Coast, the Bay Area's premier author interview program. And uh, we have a very different presentation today. We are going to talk about a book, and the author is not available. And we're going to talk to somebody who knew her and knows her very well. The title of the book is Her Wild Oats. It's a novel by the late Kathy Kamen Goldmark, and it's published by Untreed Reads. And here to talk about it is her husband, Mr. Barry. Hey, Jim. How you doing? The, it's good to be here. One of the interesting things, there are many interesting things in the backstory of this book. And it, it starts with the name of the publisher, which is Untreed Reads. And Sam, it seems to me that I think you told me that this is the first book that they've done that involved trees. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I was right when I said it was the very first, but certainly the name tells you um, that they are originally an e-book publisher. Mm -hmm. There's it, a lot of, you know, as publishing is changing, and I know you know well that it's changing dramatically, um, one of the things that is happening here in New York, and but here in the Bay Area in a big way, is these new models of publishing. And uh, Jay Hartman, Katie Sullivan, these two have start, started this um, uh, publisher called Untreed Reads, and it was ebook only. But in the case of this book, um, they this is their lead title for their season, and they her wild oats that is, and they realized that um, uh, that they should have an event, that they should have events for it, and uh, and why not do a print book? Um, as publishing is changing, one of the things that's available now is print on demand technology, and uh, you know, so it's it's kind of uh, cool and exciting that how many ways uh, a publisher can go, especially a new a small publisher yeah, like Untreed yeah, Reads. Yeah, yeah. Flexibility is the name of the game. Yeah. So we had a great event at Book Passage. And last, last week. Yeah. Yes, it was wonderful. Amy Tan read from the book. Suzanne Parry read from the book. Um, and I sang um, one of Kathy's, uh, a song that Kathy wrote, as you know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that very wonderful uh Touching uh, song. Yes. Yeah. I had to do it in a drag, of course, because it's really a woman singing the song. So what else could I do? You know, <laughs> couldn't raise my pitch of my voice, but I could put on a wig. Kathy Kamen Goldmark is no longer with us. Tell us about her. Well, Kathy was an amazing uh, woman, as and uh, she was um, just somebody so full of life. And in her too short life. She uh, lived like nine, 10, 11 lives, I think. Um, and one aspect of her life was that she was uh, took on the role of media escort here in San Francisco, which I know sounds very risque, but uh, and maybe sometimes it was. But uh, well, the, I mean, I mean, the fact of the matter is that for a long time we were called escorts. And and when and that's that's when we changed it to media escorts to take some of that suggestiveness away from the job. Right. Everybody seemed to misunderstand. Um, and uh, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, so Kathy would, uh, uh, you know, was started that business here in uh, uh, San Francisco right when uh, at the right time, you might say. Yep. And there were a lot of authors coming on tour. And she had this wonderful head of red hair, and she would wear her leopard sunglasses. She kind of looked like a rock star uh, <laughs> driving her Honda Civic. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Honda Civic didn't quite fit. Yeah, it doesn't fit. But anyhow, uh, and she was also a very uh, a talented musician and songwriter. And she would be dry. So she was driving around many of uh, uh, our America's and uh, the world's greatest authors on tour. And she discovered that, you know, she would entertain them. This was, you know, before cell phones, before everybody was sort of absorbed in, in sort of themselves like I, you know. And yep. both of us right now are looking yep. at our cell phones. Right. It's yep. ridiculous. But anyhow, and so is the engineer. Everybody here is looking at their cell phone. But um, before that time, Kathy would have these folks in the car with her. And, uh, uh, the, and they would really get to know her and she would get to know them and she would be their caretaker. And so to pass the time, say, in between going to a radio station like this and going to a bookstore for us reading and a signing, 
she might say, drive them through the mission and say, oh, I'm going to be my band is going to be playing in that corner bar over there mm -hmm. tonight. And, they, and she noticed that a lot of them would say, oh, you are so lucky. And these are like best selling authors. And she'd be thinking, I'm lucky. I'm going to back then never smoked in bars. I'm going to be hauling my own equipment into a bar <laughs> for to play for 12 people for no money and then smell like beer and cigarettes. Actually, she loved doing it. I, I shouldn't act like she didn't love it. But she noticed that these best selling authors long to be musicians and probably rock stars. And, um, you know, they I think they and because the rock stars, you know, were the heroes of the day. And um, and so she had an idea. Uh, and uh, Dave, uh, David Galea, who took over her business, um, used to be her assistant, would say that when Kathy had, had an idea, he would dive under the desk. But um, <laughs> but she had some really great ideas. A fairly safe place. <laughs> and this was one of her uh, craziest and most wonderful ideas. It was uh, to start a band uh, and of, of of authors. And that band came to be known as the Rock Bottom Remainders. And which which your brother Dave was a, was an early member, oh, one of the original certainly the original yes. members. Dave Dave, my brother Dave Barry, a as lead guitarist, which he would immediately deny he has the qualifications to do. <laughs> Although I think he's he's got some talent. But <laughs> well, after a while, it seemed to be that the less talent you had, the more in demand you were for the rock bottom remainders. Exactly, yeah. and yet. They were extremely successful, raised a tremendous amount of money for very good causes. Yes, because and we all knew that if we, you know, weren't giving that money away, people would be really mad because we're we're a bad band. So <laughs> <laughs> had to give the money away. Well, mm. that was a bad band, but this is a very good book, and I think we should talk about it a little bit when we return. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. Her Wild Oats. It's a novel written by the late Kathy Kamen Goldmark. And here speaking about it is her husband, Sam Barry. Now, Sam, one of the things I kept thinking of as I was reading the book is what, what kind of shape was it in when you and several others got to work on it to bring it to publication? It was really in pretty good shape. Kathy was a good writer and careful writer, and she had gotten it. You know, she worked hard on this book. I worked with her in the way that um, a writing husband would, mm -hmm. but she wrote it. And uh, so it was in pretty good shape, and uh, it needed just normal editing, you know, but not any radical changes. Mm. Roy Blount uh, in writing about the book, said something brief that I think makes a lot of sense. He said that it's a story full of zip and humor uh, from a lady who had a lot of both. And that that really does come come through. It, 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 it like, never stops. <laughs> yes. It keeps, yes. it keeps coming at you with plot elements and uh, sometimes strange but always interesting people. Yes. Well, you know, Kathy likes strange and interesting people. And, and uh, you know, she married you. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. You know, so. <laughs> and yeah, there and some people who have read it. Um, you sort of have said they hear it. The stories in her voice in a way. So it's very much her voice. But let, let us tell you a little something about uh, Kathy came in Goldmark. She was the author of the novel In My Shoes, Keep Walking Back to You, co-author of Write That Book Already, The Tough Love You Need to Get Published. And you're the co-author of that. Are you That's not? Right. I am indeed. It doesn't say so here, but I know that. And now uh, uh, the, she also did a book, The Great <laughs> Rock and Roll Choke Book. That she did with Dave Marsh. Right. The great critic, yeah. yeah and, and all that time she was running around making a living with very long hours as the, right. the media escort person in America, or as Calvin Trillin called her, the author hauler. <laughs> that, was, that, was what he, that was his name. And uh, she, she was a San Francisco Library Laureate, winner of the Women's National Book Association Award. And as we've been saying, a big part of the rock bottom remainders. And 
she, uh, her last job, I guess, was the Oshman J- uh, Jewish Community Center in Palo Alto. She was doing. She was arranging the events there, um, and just uh, uh, um, bringing in some great uh, things. And that's when the breast cancer uh, took her. But yeah, that was her last role, you know, day well, job. And then at the same time, with her left hand, she was producer of Sedge Thompson's program. She was. Uh, she produced West Coast Live. And did a great job of that. And also, uh, by the way, wrote a book called, uh, another novel called In My Shoes Keep Walking Back to You, which is, uh, it has, uh, it's not, these are not, it's, this is not, Her Wild Oats is not a sequel to that, but it has, as a major character, uh, a person who was a minor character in, in that book. Uh, Who's that? Well, I mean, the the guitar player is, is, of course, a character from that. And the uh. mom... Who's now sort of the grandma of uh, mm-hmm. uh, of Oates, the Wunderkind harmonica player, was uh, you know the protagonist of and of Shoes, as we used to call that book. It, it, we called that book Shoes, you know, from and my shoes keep walking back to you, which is a a, a Ray, Ray Price song, yeah. and um, and the uh, um, and this book, her Wild Oats, we we you know in this American way of shortening everything, we call this Oats, <laughs> <laughs> shoes course. and oats, of you know? course. shoes and oats. Oats, uh, you know, the title, her Wild Oats, is a double entendre because the Oats is the name of the harmonica playing boy, and well, yeah. we all know what her Wild Oats means yeah. in the other sense. Even I know what that means. Now you know, I've heard about you sowing your Wild Oats. <laughs> <laughs> The the book I, I think begins on a on a rather somber part of the of of the story. I mean the the end of uh, Arizona's marriage. Yeah, I mean she doesn't know for sure that it's the end of her marriage, although we can all kind of tell, can't we? And yes. and uh, she's waking up realizing that Arizona wakes up and is well. We she has insomnia and she's looking at the digital clock ticking away, and. Uh, um, and she uh, thinks um, she can't p- go to sleep because she's thinking about three things she's discovered. Um, mm. That her snoring uh, husband, is loudly snoring husband next to her, has uh, concealed the fact from her that he owns a gun. That's right, number one. Number two, that um, he has uh, apparently having a wild affair. Uh, with someone that's number two and that he uh is taking money from her you know they both earn money but he's taking some of her money and without her knowledge and contributing large amounts of her money to jews for jesus now they're both jewish and but as far as she knew never had any connection whatsoever to (laughs) jews for jesus (laughs) and as you (laughs) as you write in 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 the forward uh, Arizona does the only thing she can think of, the great American solution to sudden crisis, throwing a bag in her car, driving off down the highway with no plan or clear purpose. She's not sure she's leaving Jerry, that's the husband's name, but she's also not sure she's ever coming back. And that and that really, you know, sets the whole tone of the book. Yeah. And we will dig a little deeper when we come back. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. Her Wild Oats. It's a novel written by Kathy Kamen Goldmark. And joining us today to talk about it, and incidentally playing a harmonica background, is her husband, Sam Barry. Now, the reason we did that, very, very clever programming on our part, is that one of the main characters in this book is a 13-year-old harmonica virtuoso. 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Tell us about him. He's crazy. Well, he's in some ways he's um, you're just a just a regular boy who just happens to have discovered the harmonica very very young and fallen in love with it and become a master at a very young age and he's in a musical family in a 
a family that um, indulges uh, more than indulges his gift for music by making him part of the family act, mm -hmm. doing county fairs, and they they live in a kind of a roadhouse. So he he's really exposed to a lot of great stuff, but he's also protected. Like uh, he's not really uh, in a family that where they're just exposing him to the wildlife of uh, the road. They're taking care of him and raising him like and protecting him and shielding him from some of the crazy side of music. You know, one of the great things that uh, Kathy did for me, we were friends, was she exposed me to musicians. And it surprised me initially that they were so family oriented and so much involved with their children and relative children and stuff like that. So what was going on in this book, I, I, I could understand fully. Yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, there is, you know, anybody who goes out on the road and not just musicians, there there may be temptations out there. And there is mm -hmm. also, there's a saying, the code of the road, which refers to kind of like one life out there and one life at home. But uh, musicians are, of course, loving, daring people like anybody else, yeah. even if they're a little... Uh, obsessed with music. <laughs> and Otis Ray uh, Pixley, or as he's known, his nickname is Wild Oats, um, is um, is growing up in this kind of uh, loving family, loving and extended family. Um, that, uh, but he's also, but he really longs to go out with the big boys and play on on the big stage. And when the uh, book opens, that's the that's his moment has come. He's gotten a chance to go out on the road with yeah. uh, a uh, grown up band. You might the, say. The other thing that's going on as the book opens is that uh, one of the other main characters, or the other main character, Arizona Rosenblatt, what a name, has decided to. Look at those three reasons she should leave Jerry and leave him. Yeah, and 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 she's out there, and in many ways she reminds me of uh, Kathy Goldmark. She's out on the road. She takes a job as a as a waitress or as a cashier in a in a in a restaurant, and at the same time retains her job with a high powered. A media uh, mogul, type, yeah, 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 entertainment network guy. It's uh, interesting. Yeah, she uh, and 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 all the electronics that we live with, the cell phone and beyond, makes it all sound feasible. Right, because you can you can use a cell phone to manage your bosses, and he needs managing that that boss. He's helpless without her. Is is often true that these <laughs> uh, high powered people be, really need those assistants. Or uh, <laughs> she she does that for him, and she um, takes the job um, sort of by chance, but I think for the adventure uh, and maybe to find it find herself because she's feeling lost in the old life and. And uh, the waitress who hires her or says, well, hey, we have an opening here, uh, is kind of a big sister figure, you yes. know, uh, down to earth. Yes. Yeah. Now, there's, there's one nutcake character, in my opinion, a woman by the name of Kira Brantley. Yes. K K K Kira? Yeah, yeah. Kyra, whatever. Kira, it sounds like. She's, she's has too much money for her own good. And uh, she keeps calling up poor Arizona about, you know, I, I, I need shoes. You have to take me out to get shoes. I, right. I, 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 I need to eat dinner. You have to take me out to dinner. It's incredible. And then she comes up with this really big marketing idea, something about Oscars, make – Clothing to put on your Oscar statue, yes. because she's she's because she's in that married to you know Arizona's helping. Uh, one part of the assistant role is you wind up mixed up in the life of your yeah, of, the big of your boss, yeah. and 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 he's helping this woman. Uh, you know her since she's connected to the entertainment industry. Um, she has this sort of ditzy Hollywood idea that making little. Uh, um, 
wardrobes, outfits for yeah. Oscars is going to make her rich, which is kind of funny because how many Oscars are there out there? And but uh, and also, by the way, Arizona, you know, sort of takes care of her prescription habit, drug habit in the sense that or tries to manage it, I guess. Oh, that's the other marvelous thing she does. She, yeah. she tries to match her drug color to her outfit. Right. The, if, she, the, the, if she's the, taking blue pills, blue outfit. Yes, exactly. White pills, a white yeah. outfit. And it's she, so she, important that you match yeah. your pills to your outfits, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. She is really a nut. Yeah, yes. I, I think that uh, the high and mighty come off looking uh, kind of silly in this book. Yeah, <laughs> low and foolish. Low and foolish. Oh, dear. Is there any other character in the book that you particularly liked? Well, I, I think that I mean I'm. Yeah, I, I'll talk a little bit more about Oates just because. Um, just because you play harmonica. Just to play harmonica. I want to say first of all that uh, Kathy respected me as as her husband and an adult male, and so she was. I don't think she was implying that I was uh, have the maturity of a thirteen year old. At least I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we did talk about this character a lot together, and um, um, uh, you know I think in some ways it was. Um, she was really exploring her own love of in you know, all of the, in several of these characters. She was exploring her love of music and maybe that she, if her life had gone another way, she could have gone on the road. But um, one of the great scenes is that Oates admires the great players of the past, Little Walter and Big Walter, and 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 um, it turns out there's a Medium Walter, great harp player named uh, Medium Walter. So we have Little Big and Medium Walter <laughs> for because Oates is a, a you know expert on the harmonica. You know, in the uh, foreword, you say many things that make a lot of sense. And I'd, I'd like to conclude the program by sharing uh, one of your thoughts. Kathy, you write, could have used her many contacts to benefit her own interests, but that wasn't her nature. Her passion was connecting people, and she did it better than anyone I've ever known. And now I want to do that for her. I want to connect Kathy through her wonderful novel, Her Wild Oats, with you, the reader. It's a wonderful aspiration. And Her Wild Oats by Kathy Came and Goldmark is a wonderful book. You shouldn't miss it. Get it right away. This has been Conversations on the Coast, and I'm Jim Foster. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com.